Yes, hello everybody. I'm Philip Schweitzer. I'm the co-founder and CEO here at Saleswings. And welcome very much to our session, MQL, SQL, ASAP, how to manage leads with the marketing cloud. And if you'd like to connect with me on LinkedIn afterwards, uh, feel free. I'm very happy to provide a few more tips. And I uh, want to quickly uh, just say a couple of words about Saleswings. Saleswings turns the marketing cloud into an unstoppable B2B marketing platform. So you know that marketing cloud has originally been designed for more consumer-driven marketing, but because of its scale and its power, omni-channel, and the way it utilizes data, today it's a great way to use for any type of B2B uh, marketing as well. Now, uh, so here's how this looks. So basically, Saleswings really helps its clients truly understand their leads, understand their needs, their timing, their sales readiness, and we make that data available in the marketing cloud, in the sales cloud, and in other systems. But let's get started. You're not here to listen about sales wings and hear about us, uh, but really about lead management. And by the way, uh, we will be in connections as well in uh, Chicago if you're gonna meet us uh, and the team. So in speaking to hundreds of, of customers, we've identified three steps really being key to the success of lead management. Firstly, you need to have the data about your leads and accounts to truly be able to qualify. Secondly, you need to qualify them or profile them, basically utilize that information to create a profile and understand that lead. And thirdly, you need to align on a handoff process and a way to put that data to work in your system of references, which are of course the marketing cloud, and then the sales cloud in many cases. Uh, and if you have these three things in place, you have a predictable and successful lead management process. And let's look a little bit uh, into the issues here. So poor lead management has many faces. And of course, the marketing is constantly driving leads, generating interest. And if they're unable to send over the leads timely and the qualified leads, they see up to 70% of their leads rejected or completely ignored. Now, of course, it's very frustrating. And they, they say, you know, we can't hand over campaign leads and we have arguments with sales and we just can't prove the value of those campaigns. Uh, and that's just uh, not satisfying and ultimately not uh, successful. The salespeople, on the other hand, uh, studies show that only about 7% of leads are qualified when they reach the salespeople. Now, they lose deals because they miss the right moment to engage on longer cycles. They have frustrating conversations with their accounts. And of course, they miss the revenue targets. So lead management is as essential as driving leads uh, to your uh, teams. And uh, of course, management uh, is <laughs> also having issues. If they're in the same room, that's already a good start because they should be talking about how to improve that. But ultimately, uh, we hear a lot about what we like to call the lead graveyard. So what's the lead graveyard? So the lead graveyard basically are where all your leads die. And uh, here you can see this graph that was shared with, uh, with us from, from a client of ours. So you can see number of leads that were generated by the marketing team on a fiscal year. And in 2021, they had over 110,000 leads untouched, 110,000 leads potential business. And with some basic numbers of qualification rates and uh, you know qualified lead to close rates, uh, that's over 1,700 clients. And with a lifetime value of just $2,800 in this case, we're looking at almost $5 million in business that is just lost because there is no process in place and there's no systematic approach to lead management. So these three steps to success, just again, you need the data, you need to utilize the data to interpret that and gain these insights and the process has to be right. Now, how does that look if you don't have any of that? And I wanted to tell you a story and I thought insurance would be a great example. So firstly, we're all insurance clients, so you can put yourself in the shoes of that. But also insurance actually have a very difficult job of lead management. They have tons of leads. They get a lot of leads uh, specifically on the B2C side, uh, but they also have B2B customers. So there's already a, a complexity there around lead management. They have extended sales cycles, usually uh, very volatile. 
and then quick decision making. So timing is important there as well. Combined with a high customer lifetime value in this situation, you can see how uh, lead management is very important. But of course, this is valuable, valuable for many industries. Uh, just figured this would be one we can all uh, relate to. So let's imagine we just don't even have data. So we have Susanna Summer, that's our lead, submitting a newsletter form. She's requesting for some information. That lead goes into the marketing cloud. You're sending out an email. And seven days later, the sales rep finally reaches out. Well, Susanna Summer is with the competition. So in this situation, there was no data. There was no proper handover. Nothing really happened. Well, chances are this lead is simply gone. Now, how does this look? So here I'm in the sales cloud of Salesforce. This can be any kind of CRM uh, that you're connecting to the marketing cloud. Well, have a look at this list. It's unprioritized. It's, it's, it's just a, a huge list of leads. And you've seen that lead graveyard. This is really the source uh, of the problem is that there is no way, there's no data, there's no process, nothing uh, to manage these leads and be effective. And one more thing here, uh, why this uh, salesperson lost the deal. So we know that the first person to reach out to a lead when the lead is considering a, pur a purchase has a 50% higher chance to win the deal. So timing is of utmost importance. You have no time to waste when you get a good lead because you never know where they are in the decision cycle. Now we're going to start collecting a little bit of data. So firstly, that lead, of course, is engaging digital. So uh, spe specifically in the pandemic, uh, more and more clients have just focused on getting information online, B2C always, but even B2B. But we can collect that information uh, for different purposes. Here, the company has also started to ask some questions uh, on the web form. And that's, by the way, one of the first advices I will give you. Make sure you ask the right questions on the web form that allow you to qualify those leads or disqualify uh, the leads as well. Uh, and a lot of companies are worried that they're going to get less leads. Well, yes, that's true, but you don't want all those bad leads uh, because they're you know, not ready or they're not, not good at all. And by just adding one or two more relevant questions that allow you to identify whether the lead is good or not uh, can increase the lead quality tremendously. So here we have some information. Uh, remember, we're not really doing a lot with it right now, but um, we're sending an email. Uh, and yeah, quick note. So here, this is uh, considered third-party data. So we're just tracking their behavior. We're utilizing you know, uh, AdWords or, or LinkedIn to retarget them. Uh, and this here, uh, dental insurance, which she said she's possibly interested in. Phone number, this is first-party data. Now, third-party data is interesting, but first-party data is really where the power is. That's data that you own, that you've directly uh, collected from your customers, and you want to put in place a first-party data strategy. There are a lot of possibilities for you to collect data about your leads. There are data providers uh, as well that can uh, you know, sell that to you in a legal manner. Uh, you can collect it in web forms progressively. Salespeople can ask. You can do surveys and tumble us. There, are a lot of ways to get uh, information about your customers. Uh, and that first party data is really so powerful for you to use. Now, here we're going to send an information again with Marketing Cloud. Of course, it's going to be more tailored. Seven days later, that sales rep is calling. Um, and because we have the phone number, well, the, the lead wasn't ready yet. But because we have the phone number, we can send them an SMS using those omnichannel capabilities creating a best, better customer experience, uh, <clears throat> experience, reaching them at the right moment. And let's just imagine a bit later, uh, Susanna fills out another uh, web form and, well, gets a call from a B2C uh, customer, but she's not interested in that. So the customer's unhappy. So the data is not really used and uh, the process is not in place. And of course, when the B2B client, uh, salesperson calls, that lead is also just gone. So having data is the first good step, but we need to make sense out of that data. Now, what if you start taking that information and gain insights with that? And it's really not just the amount of data uh, that you want to collect. You want to collect meaningful data 
and you want to use that in a clever way. So we still don't have a handoff process, uh, but let's imagine, so we do collect the customer journey data uh, being third-party data. We have a bit of first-party data. Now with a clever tool, you can make out of that third-party data, first-party data. So you can connect typically uh, behavior, uh, the way somebody engages with you on digital channels and website, uh, the videos they watch, et cetera. You can tie this to your leads. Uh, you can tie that to your accounts and you can make uh, first party data out of that. And by doing that, you can you know, understand if they're a great fit with your business. Uh, you can identify topics that are interesting to them. Susanna cares about nutrition and fitness. She's been reading about that on the insurance blog. Uh, we can detect health insurance because she's repeatedly visited and engaged with content around health insurance. Uh, by the way, she's looked at enterprise plans. So this is fantastic information. Uh, and of course, uh, with a solid lead scoring solution. So lead scoring is a, a straightforward and highly effective manner to measure lead quality and lead interest. Uh, we now know, know that Susanna is a hot lead uh, that we need to go after. So we have a much more powerful data set right now. We've interpreted that data. We have this profile. We send out an email. We're retargeting them. We're getting, uh, we're giving a call from uh, the B2B salesperson here uh, 14 days later. But again, it's too late. So why is it too late? So it's too late because the data's there, it's interpreted, but it's somewhere uh, in the systems. It's in marketing cloud or sales cloud, but it's not in place because there's no strategy and there's no lead management process. So we can have data, we can interpret it, but if we don't get it where it is, it's just completely useless. So of course our uh, friends here, the other insurance company are smarter and they are already there. And well, sometimes these deals can be uh, significant. Now, how does that look? If we have the data, we have a way to analyze the data and we have a handoff process that's agreed between marketing and sales and that's reflected in your systems and in your processes. So again, we're, uh, Susanna's arriving, we're uh, collecting all this information, we have all these rich insights, and now we're gonna activate this information in your systems of reference. Data being available and the way you integrate data into your platforms is absolutely crucial. The great thing with the Salesforce platforms is, so that's both the marketing cloud and the sales cloud, they are absolute world champions at utilizing data and then you know, weave that into a process. Whether it's journey builder or it's a process builder or lists or reports, there's different ways to utilize such information uh, to then design the process around it. And then again, of course, uh, combined with that process, we have a really uh, good situation. So let me show you how that can look. So here we have a uh, journey, this insurance journey. So it starts with a cloud page. Uh, so remember the web form. So remember there's B2B and B2C, and you really want to make sure you send that lead to the right, uh, onto the right path. So here we can take a decision. So we're going to take an instant decision. Are we going to send them down the B2B route or are we going to send down the B2C route? Now, how do we do that? So here, of course, we have access to all of our uh, uh, data that we uh, push into the marketing cloud. So here we could look at lead scoring. So remember, lead scoring is a way to measure interest on different areas. So you could measure B2B interest, uh, B2C interest, health insurance interest, or uh, something else. Uh, so here we can say if the B2B score is higher than 40, well, uh, then we want to prioritize uh, the B2B offering. At that moment, you can create the lead straight away in uh, Salesforce. And again, it's Salesforce, it's another system. We recommend that you send all of your leads in the CRM. And the reason is reporting. If you keep those leads out of the CRM, you will not get the reporting that you want because you don't have that data within the context of your sales reporting. Now, what you can do at this moment is you can create them in the system and you keep that lead unassigned. So you don't assign it, you wait until the lead is sales ready, 
Uh, and so you have it there uh, just waiting. Next, we're going to send some information. So I have created a small uh, newsletter here uh, from this particular insurance company. So having great data allows us now to, to personalize the experience. And of course, personalization is also about managing these leads, because if you don't uh, send the right information, uh, well, they're uh, not going to be interested. And what I've done here is I've inserted a dynamic content block. And uh, firstly, I'm going to send them by default some news. So this is a new lead, new relationship. Uh, so by default, we're going to send some news. But, and I hope you can see this, uh, if the lead score is above 40 and we've identified interest in enterprise plans, that lead is interesting. We're going to send a bottom of the funnel call to action so we can drive appointments. If not, but they do show interest in enterprise plans, we could show something else. There are really way, easy ways to, uh, to get better. Another way that you can uh, use to create alignment and manage leads uh, with the marketing cloud is you can trigger sales alerts. So why not use the journey builder to send an email to your salespeople, whether those are internal sales or they are uh, resellers or channel partners or something, you want to enable them to manage those leads in a fantastic manner. Now, Marketing Cloud allows to do that. You look up the lead uh, owner or the contact owner or the responsible partner, and you send them uh, that specific email. And here we have, for example, the email. You have a new hot lead, uh, qualified as lead with insights. Uh, and then here uh, we have, for example, this link. Uh, and that's you know a place in the case of uh, sales wings we can uh, send the insights to the rep and we can send uh, rich information so this is uh this is just a dummy uh, a dummy record so I went to the aig website here uh, so what can we see so here we see how this data was interpreted so we've identified interest in fitness and interest in nutrition so because susanna has engaged with these particular uh, uh website pages uh we have measured a high b2b score and a low b2c score so we can route that lead now uh in a in a great way and of course we have these interests and we have other data we can use for personalization and other use cases now within the crm having such great insights and putting them at work in a process can take a list like that and turn it into a list like this. Putting the hottest leads at the top at any moment in time. So why is this a great thing? Remember how often these salespeople arrive too late? Quick decision making, being the first is important. We want to make this easy for salespeople. We want marketing to support your sales teams with the data so that they trust your leads and they don't ignore them. Remember, you can also send those leads unassigned. Well, why not use Process Builder? So having the data native gives you access to that. When a lead has a uh, score of, of X, you can assign that lead at that moment to a rep, making the lead show up in a report, and maybe even trigger a sales alert uh, straight from the sales cloud. So that's another uh, way to use process. So here's process builder or flows or, or something to create a logical and frankly, quite easy uh, uh, process to, uh, to assign those leads. Now, prioritization happens in different areas. So as a marketer, uh, you're gonna be working with sales operations, try to get a very deep understanding how your uh, sales team is working. Are they working with leads? Are they working with accounts? So you can also prioritize accounts using lead scoring. Are they using opportunities? You can prioritize opportunities with lead scoring, uh, with last activity, et cetera. So basically, uh, there are many ways that you can, uh, where you can put the data uh, to work. Now here we see that same list again from before. So we have Susanna, Susanna Summer uh, right here from corporate. And again, here we have these sales insights. 
So make sure as a marketer, you try to really enable those sales teams with any kind of information you can that help the salespeople do their jobs and manage not just their leads, but manage themselves and manage their, uh, their time. So things like uh, activity history, uh, again, needs and intent. Uh, these are all great ways to help salespeople qualify the leads and, and avoid their dying uh, somewhere in a CRM and are, uh, are just forgotten. Remember the timing. So marketing and sales teams uh, working together in motion happens often around campaigns. So identify a way to automatically hand off your campaign leads uh, to your sales teams. This has to be a seamless and automated process. Uh, so one way, of course, again, are reporting. Uh, you can, you know, you can tag leads uh, that are, click in specific email campaigns or else, and you can create reporting uh, and you can put this report available to your sales reps. And for sales cloud, so uh, specifically, there's a little tip here. Salespeople can actually subscribe to certain reports that you're giving to them. Uh, by subscribing, they can sign up for daily alerts and they could every morning at eight o'clock get a report in their inbox with the leads that were interested yesterday uh, or that qualify of some other way. So that's another uh, interesting idea. Last point I want to show you. So managing leads is also managing yourself. Remember that. So you're driving leads with different campaigns. Make sure you get insights on the effectiveness of your campaigns, which campaigns are driving the most qualified leads, uh, which campaigns have the highest lead cost that I want to do less or more of. Uh, so again, there's great ways to do that, uh, whether it's data Rama in marketing cloud or, uh, right within, uh, the sales cloud. So we're almost at the end. So here, of course, we have, uh, a timely call prioritized lead right away. Uh, and this, uh, this lead is going to our insurance company. So we're at the end uh, of the, the speech. I hope I could provide you with some actionable tips. Put a data collection strategy in place. You don't need a lot of data. You need good data. Good data, focus on having the right data. Uh, invest in getting that data to work. Uh, make sure you have the tools to get those insights. And align in a great process uh, with your sales team. Everybody in the room. Uh, talk about the lead uh, management process and then see how uh, and where you want to put that to work in Journey Builder or uh, in any other uh, system. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm at the end. So if there are any questions, uh, shoot. Uh, so how do you suggest you engage a sales team in the process when they aren't used to managing their leads through this type of process in the past? So uh, we don't have that much time left, but so there is this famous uh, term called shelfware, right? So you can have the best tool in the world. If you're not using it, absolutely right, Michelle. Yeah, it, there's no use. Training is the answer. Bring them on board. So first, you want to align with the key stakeholders. Build a small committee. So the sales manager, the marketing manager, uh, uh, bring in some key uh, salespeople. Don't necessarily bring in your strongest reps, bring in those B reps, those C reps that struggle, try to understand why and how they struggle and talk about it. And once you have uh, aligned on a process, uh, train them, train them about how it works and why you've decided to do it that way. Because uh, we're all uh, animals of habits. So we, uh, you know, we're used to something absolutely. And there's a little bit of change management involved. But if you have a great tool, uh, well, like Sales Wings as well, that integrates well into your systems, it can be minimal invasive. You can take an existing views and you can optimize them. You can take an existing process. You don't have to uh, reinvent the, uh, the wheel. But training uh, is the answer uh, and convincing and, uh, and bringing them on board uh, early on. Uh, Amy for lead scoring. So of, of course we're using uh, sales wings, the, the B2B studio for the marketing cloud. We have a best of breed lead scoring, uh, sales insights, uh, uh, behavioral segmentation and profiling. Uh, so reach out to us if you'd like to, um, talk to us. 
And um, yeah, are there any other questions at this point? Uh, you can chat with me on the platform as well, the social platform. Uh, more than happy to uh, stay here. There's some great talks coming up as well. All right. I think we're think we're good. So thank you very much again for all the attention. I uh, hope you could learn something uh, today, and reach out to me if you have a you know look for any tips or you want to uh, just uh, share some share some ideas or or, or, or pains you have. Uh, absolutely uh, happy to help. Okay, have a good evening, everybody, and hope to see you at uh, connections this year. And uh, have a great uh, a great event. Thank you very much.